sides. All right. Um, in this angle, you guys can see that uh, this angle looks like it is a reflection, right? Yeah. If you guys are going back to our reflection um, course, you guys can kind of see that we kind of have a reflection about um, that little dotted line. So now when I'm looking at what angles are going to be congruent to each other, um, I could say that my angle y is congruent to angle s. I could say angle x is congruent to angle r. The other way you can look at this is notice that you know rather than doing tick marks, we just have one angle, met, one angle line. And these have double. And then this one has triple. So therefore, you can say that they're equal in measure. Last one, we could say that angle z is congruent to angle z. All right, they both have a point um, angle z. Then by going to your, so that's your angles. And then when we're looking at what sides are congruent, I can, sell, I can say that yz is congruent to sz. Notice how I go in the same direction. You have to make sure you follow congruent parts when labeling your sides. Um, then I can just go with line yx is congruent to line SR. And XZ is congruent to line RZ. So, and it really doesn't matter which direction you go, Camilla, as long as you're consistent with going in the same directions for both triangles. So now that I understand that I have congruent angles and congruent sides, I can write a congruency statement. And again, yours might be a little bit different from mine, but as long as you're going in the same order for both triangles, that's OK. So in mine, I'm just going to say y, z, x is congruent to s, z, r. Sorry. Triangle s, z, r. All right. Notice how the z is in the middle. y and the s are beginning, and y or s are what my, are congruent angles. OK? Cool? Make sense? Kind of? A little bit?